Welcome to Suko Sunday at Gears. We're here a little early today, so we can just see how things are set up. As you enter in, first thing you see is a sign-up sheet. We can put today's date on it, and as each team comes in, or group of kids, they can be assigned a team, and um, later on we'll give them a team name, we'll record the captain, and the ages of the kids. We'll make sure everyone gets a name tag, and if they're paying, then they get a receipt. The other thing we always make sure we have on the registration table are flyers for any of our, any of our other robotic programs. See, we have the uh, elementary and primary summer tech, camp, tech camps, and we have the sea perch underwater camp. As you enter the room, you'll see we have it decorated with various robot posters, banners, we have trophies everything to make it seem like this really is a good robotic center. But what everyone really wants to get straight into is the Lego. You see we have uh, all of our Lego pieces set up ready for Sugo today, organized by function, shape, size, color, uh, lots of Tetric beams and other accessories. These are all the pieces that people will be able to use to add to their basic kit. When they come in, once they've registered, they'll be handed a basic starter Sugo kit which is uh, what you see here. Uh, it's a bin with the team number, uh, two motors, two light sensors, cables, NXT. And we start off with a few of these pre-made and as the day proceeds, depending on how many people we get, we make up more. We have pieces ready to make up more kits here. So everyone gets one of these basic starter Sugo kits. So Lisa, what are you doing? I'm checking the teams in. The teams enter, we have them sign in on the team sheet. We assign them a team number. They give us their team name. Yes, are you focusing in on this? And then we make sure one of our able-bodied helpers, able-bodied helpers, gets them a team kit and gets them started. For new teams, we have Chuck or Phil or someone to uh, assist them getting started. That's pretty much what we do. Okay, I'm going to explain to a new rookie team the basics of building a Sugo robot. Sugo. Okay, so here's an example of Sugo Okay, It's pretty big. So. You know what a Sugo restaurant is? Have you seen the big fat Japanese guys with the diapers? That's what we're going to build. We're going to build a robot that acts like that. Okay? So, this is what you start with. This is your kit of parts here. Yeah. Yeah. These are all Lego parts. So, this is the brain. So, every Sumo wrestler needs a brain, right? Now, the sumo wrestling is some other stuff. It's a way to be able to push itself around. So that's what these motors are for. So the motors get attached to the wheels using axles. Okay? So the first thing you're going to do with your robot is to build the base of the robot with the wheels. Okay? And then the next thing you're going to do is you need to have a way to keep the robot on the sumo ring. And what we're going to do for that, we have these little light sensors. We're going to look for the black line in the ring. When the robot comes up to the black line, it's going to see it. It's going to back up and turn around. Okay? So then one of these on each side of the front. Right. 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 So this is the eye of the sumo robot. So it has eyes and it looks for the other robots. So and when it sees another robot, what do you think it does? It pushes it exactly. So that's the basics and we can do it anything we like, but it has to fit in the box. So it just took So that's okay. So it has to fit in the box and it can't be too heavy, but yours won't be too heavy. And then we have a little program that knows how to talk to all the sensors and the motors by sumo. Okay? Are you ready to go? Okay, let's go then. Alright. That's your film. What are you doing? I'm here with Colin and we're going to check out his, his uh, Sugo boy. He just finished it. We found out he had a couple of cables missing, so we we'll got him to put those cables in. So now we're going to check it out. So to do that, we have a special program called the Mechanic. So we start the robot up. And it's important that when we start the program, it's on the table so the light sensors can work. So, we select the mechanic program and run it. It's talking to me, if you're coming close, um, it's telling me that it's seeing something and then I can tell right away why it's seeing something. These eyes are seeing these, so let me take these off here. 
Okay, so now it stopped talking, so it's telling us it can't see anything. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the motor direction, and we do that just by hitting the orange button. This should go forward and back, and then turn right. All right. So it turned in the incorrect direction. So what we need to do is tell it to change the direction. So on the screen here, you'll see it says direction forward. If I hit the right hand arrow, it'll switch direction to reverse. So now when I run the test program, it goes forward and then it should turn right. So now we know the motors are hooked up correctly and it knows forward and backwards. So then we, what we do is we check the sensor. So we do that by putting our hand in front. So it's saying forward object. So we know that the sensors are clear. The next thing we do is we check the line sensors by putting so it's saying left. So we know that our light sensors are good. So at that point, we know that our program's set up, and we can run a little test. Oops, sorry. We can run a little test program of the Sugo. Yeah. So it's counting down, and it should take off across the table, and off it goes. Reversing when it sees the line, and then it should. Yeah. All right, so that's good. Okay, so there you go. You're all set. So now you need to take that and get it checked in. All right, guys, come on in. So, Derek, what are you doing? I am checking in team number seven. So, pretty much what we will do is make sure it's, the weight is okay, which is one pound eight ounces. So, if you put that on scale. It looks like it is one pound six ounces and point three, which doesn't really matter. Then we put it inside the sizing box to make sure it fits. So put that in there. And that is okay, so that done. We have checked it in. And now we give put it in the box and take it out there for competition. So Max, what are you doing? I'm entering the uh, team names and the team members associated with those names. Once I've done that, in this case we have nine teams, and so I select the nine teams tab, and what you see is team one, Titanium, is shown along with team two and three, which will be the first uh, people to face off against one another. And as you can see, once that takes place, then we drop down to this particular bracket and so forth and so on. Uh, there are two brackets. One of them is the winner's bracket, and the, seven, the other one is the um, second chance bracket. So, as a minimum, each team gets an opportunity to compete twice. As the teams are scored, for example, assume teams team two wins the first match, put a two there. Assume team three wins the second match, put a two there. And then let's assume that team two wins the third match. Put a four there, and you notice that the team two folks are automatically advanced to the next bracket. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Ready. Ready, set, Sugo. Round number one of match number nine. Team number three, Terminators, versus team number seven, Destroyer. And that's the win for team number seven, Destroyer. Ready, set, Sugo. Round number two of match number five, team number eight, versus team number nine, Bulldogs, versus Terminator. <laughs> Versus team number two, Max the Panther. 
The team is going oh. four together. Team number four going towards the edge. Team number two. And team number two pushing on team number four. Team number four now coming in from behind. Backs off and goes the other way. Now team number two pushing on team number four. And that's the win for team number two. Set to go. Round number two at game number nine. Team number seven versus team number five. Steel Lego. Both going head to head again. I'm nice on number seven. Steel Lego. Woo! Oh! Oh, 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 nice one. Okay, this is game number nine, team number seven versus team number five. Steel Lego going head to head for the third time in a row. Come on! 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 Good luck. <laughs> okay. Not just luck, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> and both teams ready. Ready, set, set to go. go. Round number two of the finals. Team number six, Fireball versus team number five, Paintballers. Oh! And team number six. Tiebreaker. The tiebreaker. And actually, um, if six wins, that's the end of it, and six is our champion of the day. If five wins, we will have to play another round because each robot has to lose at least twice. Wow. Ready, set, to go. Round number one of the absolute finals. <laughs> Team number five, Paintballers, versus team number six, Fireball. And that's a win for team number six, Fireball. Okay, so now if, uh, if Fireball wins this next match, that's it, they will be the champions. If team number five wins, we will play one more time in a tiebreaker. <laughs> Unless it's a foul. <laughs> Two of the absolute finals. Team number five versus team number six. Paintballers versus Fireball. Team number five pushing on the side of team number six. Doesn't get anything done. Now team number five coming in from behind. Oh, That's a win for team number five. So we have a tiebreaker. Oh, 